I wish to first thank one of my subscribers, the White Gormley Brickley, for recommending this fascinating and horrific crime. Now on with the video. In 1973, Elsie Ralph was 23 years old and a mother to three small children. From left to right, Paul, aged four, Samantha, aged just nine months, and Dawn, aged two. For no apparent reason, the family lodger, 22-year-old David McGreevy, killed all three children, mutilated their bodies, and then displayed them, resulting in a scene that horrified the attending police and the country as a whole, with him being nicknamed the Monster of Worcester. Welcome to Evil Among Us. David McGreevy was born in 1951 in Southport, a town seven miles outside of Manchester, in the north of the UK. He was the second eldest of six children. His father was in the army, and so the children moved around in both the UK and overseas, including staying in Germany. There are no obvious indicators of abuse or issues in McGreevy's childhood, or particular concerns about his behaviour, aside from one incident recounted by his mother, where he stole her money to go on a trip to Liverpool. In 1967, at age 15, McGreevy left school and joined the Royal Navy, and was eventually stationed on the aircraft carrier HMS Eagle. However, McGreevy was not a model sailor, and was described as cocky and arrogant, an individual who did not like rules, and who got into trouble often with his superior officers. McGreevy was only in the Navy for five years, and his reckless behaviour kept on escalating, during these years, he developed a serious problem with alcohol and was frequently drunk. The final straw came in mid-1971, when he was aged 20, when, after being disciplined, he broke into an officer's room and set fire to a bin with papers in it. Probably seeing how serious this was, he himself raised the alarm, and it appears he was hoping that people would think he was just an eyewitness, and surely the person who reported it couldn't be the one who set the fire in the first place. However, the Navy saw through this, and he was sentenced to 90 days confinement for this incident. At this point, a psychiatric report was completed, but there is no record of what it contained. I'd be fascinated to know what they thought of McGreevy, considering his actions just a few years later. He was then discharged from the Navy in November 1971. Having nowhere else to go, McGreevy turned up at his parents' house one day, looking very dejected, dropping his bags on the floor, and saying, quote, I'm out. McGreevy then sat around the house, basically doing nothing aside from drinking, and he couldn't hold down a job. McGreevy worked various jobs, including as a chef and a labourer, but always lost these jobs because of his arrogance, attitude, and his alcohol problems. McGreevy instead focused on a relationship with a woman called Mary, who he referred to as his fiancée. She was a woman that he met whilst in the Navy, and who he asked to marry him after knowing her for only a short time. However, this also came to an end, souring McGreevy's mood even further. He did nothing around the house, did not contribute to the rent, refused to do any household chores, and simply sat around sulking. It seems he believed the world owed him, and refused to get off his ass to achieve anything for himself. Eventually, his parents got sick of him, and McGreevy was kicked out, setting in motion a sequence of events which would lead to the horrific death of three innocent children. Having nowhere else to go, in 1972, McGreevy moved in with an old school friend, Clive Ralph. Clive lived with his pregnant wife, Elsie. The couple already had two children, three-year-old Paul and 20-month-old Dawn, and in September 1972, the couple welcomed a new baby, Samantha. The six of them shared a small property in Gillam Street in the Rainbow Hill district of Worcester, a city in the Midlands just outside Birmingham, so they were constantly under each other's feet. McGreevy continued to do nothing to better his life, but was paid a small amount by Clive and Elsie to look after the children and to cook the occasional meal. However, he was a generally unpleasant man, with neighbours describing him as, quote, a bit of a know-it-all. However, McGreevy's drinking was out of control, and the police were frequently arrested him for being drunk and walking in the middle of the road. He's described as having a temper when he was drunk. It's clear that McGreevy was coming apart at the seams. He was an unstable and explosive man who had free access to vulnerable children, but no one predicted what happened next. In 
On Friday the 13th of April 1973, McGreevy was at a pub drinking. He drank five to seven pints of strong beer and got into an argument with a friend, resulting in him storming out. Clive picked up McGreevy and took him back to their home and asked him to look after the children while he went to pick Elsie up from work. McGreevy was only with the children for a short time, for approximately an hour between 10.15 and 11.15pm. What triggered his next actions is unclear, but it appears that Samantha was crying for a bottle, and this made him angry. Instead of comforting her, or even leaving the house, McGreevy beat Samantha to death, fracturing her skull. He then took a knife and cut the throat of two-year-old Dawn. McGreevy then strangled four-year-old Paul with a wire. As if killing three children was not bad enough, McGreevy then went to the basement, got a pickaxe, and began mutilating the children's bodies, hacking them, and destroying their tiny corpses. Then, as if something out of a twisted horror film, McGreevy dragged the children's bodies into the garden and impaled them on the spikes at the top of a neighbour's fence, leaving them displayed for all to see. He then fled the scene. Elsie and Ralph returned home, finding the house in darkness, and, when they couldn't find the children, they called the police. They then noticed blood splatters around the house and were in a state of blind panic. The police arrived and shining flashlights into the dark saw the broken and mutilated bodies of the three children impaled in the back garden. The police stopped both Elsie and Clive from seeing the children, even at the mortuary. Their bodies must have been in a terrible state. Elsie stated later, quote, All I wanted was to see my babies one last time. I wanted to hold them in my arms and say goodbye. I kept thinking someone was going to tell me there had been a terrible mistake and they were someone else's children. McGreevy was found walking the streets in a drunken state at 3.50am the next morning. He initially claimed to have no knowledge of the triple murder but quickly confessed with him stating, quote, It was me, but it wasn't me. He then described what he did to the children. He stated, quote, I put my hand over Samantha's mouth and it went from there. It's all in the house. On Paul, I used a wire. I was going to bury him, but I couldn't. I went outside and I put them on the fence. All I could hear is kids, kids, kids. Ultimately, McGreevy's only explanation for his horrific crimes was that the baby would not stop crying. On the 28th of June 1973, McGreevy appeared in court and pleaded guilty to the murders of all three children. The hearing lasted only eight minutes because McGreevy pleaded guilty and no defence was presented. He was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum tariff of 20 years. McGreevy was lucky to escape with his life as he committed the crimes only four years after the death penalty for murder was abolished in the UK in 1969. Had it not been... I have no doubt that McGreevy would have been executed. McGreevy never provided any real explanation for his crimes and it's still unclear why he killed three innocent children. His actions have been analysed by some eminent psychologists and criminologists in the UK, including Professor David Wilson and Dr Elizabeth Yardley, and they seem to have drawn a blank. The only thing they highlight is McGreevy's impulsive behaviour, acting without considering the consequences of his actions, referring to the fire he set when he was in the Navy and stealing his mother's money when he was a child. I think what they're implying is that in a moment of drunken rage, McGreevy acted impulsively and killed the children. However, personally, I think this is only part of the reason. This may explain why he initially killed them, but it doesn't explain what he did to their bodies. Instead, I think that McGreevy was an arrogant and petulant young man who believed that he was owed something by life and thought he could act in any way he wanted and still be successful. However, he wasn't willing to work for it. He flounced into the Navy, thinking his shit didn't stink, and got kicked out and sat and sulked, getting more angry about how hard done by he was, and he lost himself in the bottle, which inevitably made him feel more like a victim. I think that McGreevy saw his life in contrast to Elsie and Clive, who were working and had a family, with him essentially leeching off them. I think that McGreevy was insanely jealous, 
thinking why should these people have these things when they should belong to me. The crying children I believe set McGreevy off and he directs his pathetic, petulant anger and self-pity towards them. Him hacking them with a pickaxe and displaying their bodies I think was to destroy what someone else had and to display what he had done so both parents and the world could see what happens when David McGreevy was not given what he believed he was entitled to. Unsurprisingly, McGreevy, the triple child killer, did not have an easy time in prison, and this was in large part because his crimes were publicised, with him being dubbed the, quote, Beast of Worcester. In 1975, he was seriously assaulted by fellow prisoners. In 1978, he was threatened with violence. In 1991, his cell was destroyed by other inmates. In 1995, he was again attacked by other inmates, and a year later, he was again seriously assaulted. Child murderers are the lowest rung of the ladder in prison, and a triple murderer is somewhere even lower than that. McGreevy spent most of his time in prison in protective custody due to fears for his safety. In 2006, McGreevy was again in the newspapers when he was photographed walking the streets of Liverpool. It transpired that he was on day release from open prison and, as part of his preparation for release, was allowed to stay overnight at a bail hostel in the area. The public outrage led to McGreevy being sent back to closed conditions. However, despite this public outcry, in December 2018, a parole board approved 67-year-old McGreevy's release from prison after 45 years behind bars because he was no longer considered a risk to society and he had, quote, changed considerably in this time. So, McGreevy has been in the community now for four years, I assume living under a different identity, interacting with people who don't realise that the man they're speaking to or are friends with is the brutal killer of three innocent children. The people who suffered the most as a result of McGreevy's crimes were Elsie and Clive. Elsie tried to commit suicide on multiple occasions after the death of her children. I cannot even imagine the pain she must have gone through being a young woman with a whole life ahead of her with her three children to then have this monster snatch that all away from her. While she did not see the bodies of her children, she must have seen all the gory details in the papers. This short clip outlines the impact it had on her, with Elsie speaking here in 2016, prior to McGreevy being released. And even prison is too good for him. What effect did all this terrible thing have on your marriage? It broke up where I was into such a state and I, had, I tried to commit suicide because I couldn't be coping with it and I was on such a high dosage of sedation from the doctors to try and get me through the thing. My husband came to me one day and he just said he couldn't cope with it anymore and he was putting him for a divorce. A few months after the murders, the Ralphs parted ways, while McGreevy had only just begun serving his sentence. Elsie is still alive and therefore unfortunately had to receive notification that the killer of her children is now free. This was despite Elsie repeatedly writing to the parole board, begging for McGreevy to remain in prison for the rest of his life. In a news article from 2019, Elsie stated, quote, I feel like killing him if I could get hold of him. He should never have been released. He took three lives. Also, he took my life, really. She also said, quote, I was told he would never go free. He put my babies on spikes for God's sake. He mutilated them and they died in agony. What this animal did to my children was every bit as bad as what the Moors murderers did. So, Elsie's life was destroyed and despite her begging for McGreevy to rot in prison, she has to spend her final days knowing he's out there, somewhere, the man who murdered and mutilated her children. As far as I'm concerned, all my subscribers and viewers are amateur profilers and investigators. I've given my thoughts on why McGreevy did what he did, and I want to hear what you think, as well as your general thoughts on this case. How do you feel knowing this man is now free? Please like, share and subscribe, and feel free to suggest any cases for future videos. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.